Hello again, you're watching Good Morning Britain. I'm sorry to tell you about some really shocking new statistics which show that almost 19,000 children have been hospitalised, actually hospitalised for self-harm in the past year across England and Wales. Yeah, the worrying research from the NSPCC highlights the number of youngsters taking drastic steps to alleviate emotional pain and suffering. 13 to 17 year olds are most likely to be hospitalised for acts of self-harm such as overdosing on pills. Uh, the new figures are backed up by Childline which gave uh, more than 18,000 counselling sessions about self-harm last year and then SPCC says children are driven to self-harm as a way of dealing with tensions and distress in their lives. Well, Emily Cherry from the NSPCC joins us now. This is obviously horrific for the children that feel in the position to do this, but you also think of the parents. It must be one of the, you know, your great urge as a parent is to protect your child from harm, isn't it? And the idea that they are self-harming is devastating. Why are we in the state we are that so many youngsters are doing this to themselves? So as you said in your introduction, you know, Childline is taking up to 50 calls a day from children who are feeling so desperate mm. about that feeling of pressure and being under siege from pressure constantly around them. It's really worrying. So as a parent, it must be something that you're really concerned about. So I think it's so important that we have those regular conversations with children as parents about what they're feeling, what they're facing, and really to help them build their confidence through positive techniques. Um, so rather than turning to self-harm, thinking about things that they enjoy and they can achieve using distractions techniques like music, sport, art, so that children can kind of grow in confidence. Why is it so much worse now though? Why are those tensions so much harder for children to deal with? Can it be worse than being an evacuee in the war when we didn't see these figures or hiding in tunnels during the blitz or, you know, in the 30s starving to death because of no money? Why are the pressures so much worse that children are doing this to themselves now? So we have seen a, a huge rise, a continual rise in self-harm, particularly over the last decade. One of the things that we hear regularly from children calling to Childline is that it's feeling that social media is creating huge amounts of tension and pressure, and it's always on 24-7. That feeling with them never goes away. Um, and then seeing, I mean, they're also reacting to worrying things in the world. So when mm -hmm. things like Syria happens, they see that in the news, and then that impacts on them, their self-esteem, mm -hmm. and they worry about things. So it's always kind of with children. Undoubtedly, uh, the parents, as Kate was saying, that it would be a, a terrifying moment to find out this. Uh, is there any signs they should be looking at, out for, Emily, that maybe will give them an insight or an idea that, that, that their child isn't opening up to them but, but could do with some help? So certainly children who are withdrawn, who are low mood, who are covering themselves up, who may be fearful if you take away their kind of mobile phone because they may be using that for support. So those regular and early conversations are all really important. Also conversations in schools are important and just constantly reminding them if they can't come to you, there is Childline available. And this Christmas we're really calling on the general public to get behind our call for help appeal so that we can make sure we can be there for every child who needs us.